Orchid Akamai. And in the past 10 years, I worked in, uh, in a variety of web application firewall vendors. And as part of my job as a security researcher, was a um, well, small part of the job, but very significant one, was to look into the data, to look into the result of the web application firewall, the triggers that were triggered by the WAF. And by looking on those triggers, I was trying to see, well, if there are false positive over there, if there are all kind of attacks that being detected. And while doing that, well, some thought crossed my mind about why we are not utilizing that data, why we are not taking all the data that we already have, that was already fired, that was already triggered, and save and try to find all kinds of things that we can do with this data, all kinds of insight that we can get out of this data. And this is exactly what I'm going to talk to you today, an actionable intelligence by analyzing WAF triggers. And before I will start with a, well, a short story uh, about this kind of analysis, I will say, well, an important note about the things that I'm going to talk about. All the things that I'm doing are based on mod security core rule set, meaning that the baseline, the triggers that I have, the analysis that I was doing, those things that I'm going to talk to you today are based on mod security. And while I won't say that a lot during the presentation, that's the baseline, it's important to you to know that. So let's start with a story. And in the story, one of our customers uh, which is usually happens, calls us and tells us, well, guys, I'm being attacked. What really happened out there? And each kind of such attacks start with a very basic analysis of the data. So we're doing drill down and look on the triggers that were fired. And in this example, when looking into the data, when doing a deep dive into the data, we can actually see that someone is sending a remote file inclusion attack uh, trying to exploit a WordPress plugin vulnerability. To those, of, to those of you that are not familiar with RFI, the basic concept is that someone is trying to inject remote source code located on remote server into your application, and by doing that, it will probably own your application or have full control on your application, which is pretty bad. And in this case, well, when looking into the data, so you see the name of the parameter that is trying to be injected, which is WordPress path, and you can see the remote source code that someone's trying to inject. And in this case, when looking at that, well, I was able to see that this is a page that's located on Google's humans.txt. Doesn't make sense. So I went to that page and looked at it, and it's a textual, it's a textual page. That's funny. So while doing that analysis on those kind of requests, I had some questions that crossed my mind. So the first one, I looked at that exploit that we just saw. It's an exploit from 2007. Why should someone try to exploit a vulnerability from 2007? You would expect that such vulnerability will already be mitigated. So what is trying to do here? The second part is, well, I know my customer, and I know that his platform is .NET, and someone is trying to inject PHP vulnerability, well, WordPress PHP vulnerability to the application. Why is he doing that? That's not smart. And the third part is, well, we talked about it. It's the legitimate page. It's the humans.txt page on Google. Why should someone use that page? Doesn't make sense. And we'll go back to those questions. But before doing that, well, I stored all the data of that customer, and I went to that data. This data is stored in a, in a database, and I have the ability to query this data. So I started querying the data, and the first question that crossed my mind here was, let's try to figure out what that malicious guy that I saw sending those attacks before, what he was doing on that specific application in the past week. And I was able to see that he was sending more than 2,000 unique remote file inclusion attack to that specific application. That's nice. But I had another question that I want to ask to, to query the data on. And that was, well, maybe I will try to see. I know that my customer has numerous applications, so let's try to see if that specific bad guy is doing all kind of attacks on other application that I'm not aware of, that customer. And in this case, well, 
I found out that there are 12 different applications being hit by the same malicious actor, sending more than 11,000 uh, 11, attacks on a time frame of one week. But that's not enough. And I decided to take it one step further and try to find, well, we'll get back to that, but try to find similar activities. We will try to explain what does it mean, similar activities. But the basic concept that I want to check if there are other bad actors behaves the same as the actor that we just saw, the attacker that sent the attacks, and try to figure out if there are other attacks. And in this case, and this is the interesting part, I was able to see a bot network hitting my customer using more than 50 machines, most of them, by the way, uh, compromised web servers that are being used as attacking tool and sending over 500,000 attacks on a time frame of one week. So we had some question open from before, and well, these are the answers. The first one was why expert from 2007 and the answer is quite simple. The attacker is trying to be lucky. That's what he's trying to do. He's shooting all over the place, and that's what happened. The second question was, why using a legitimate page? Why using Google's um, domain and putting a page from Google? And in this case, well, the attacker is trying to find visibility. He's trying to see if the application is really vulnerable, and once he knows it's vulnerable, then and only then, he will use a remote source code with an actual code injected into the application. He don't want to reveal the source code that he's trying to inject on the first try, because he doesn't know if there are vulnerabilities. And the last question was the why sending PHP to .NET application, and it's the same as the first one. He's trying to be lucky. He's shooting all over the place. We saw him sending attacks from 2005 till 2012, meaning exploit that were discovered between those years. He's using every tool he can get in order to find exploits. So in such cases, well, when I see such a orchestrated attack, I'm trying to find insights. I'm trying to find, well, what can I do with it? What can I learn from this attack? And I found something, well, that are interesting from that attack that I need to consider. LCD, lowest common denominator. The lowest pattern that I can retrieve from all of the attacks that I saw that botnet sending, it's humans.txt. The second insight was, as I told you before, some of the attacks came from compromised web servers meaning their IP addresses are fixed. They are not changing. They are not dynamic. Therefore, well, if they were, if now they, they were used for remote file inclusion, maybe in the future they will be used for DDoS or DOS or scraping or whatever. That's important thing. And the third part here, well, I can see that when attackers send those attacks, since those, well, accessing to pages that does not exist, well, what we actually see is that the attacker generates a lot of 404 page not found on the application, which is something also interesting. And the last thing here is, well, as we saw before, is trying to access many applications at the same time, and that's also interesting information. So that's cool, but what can I do with that? And that's, well, that's the second part. I was saying to myself, well, maybe I can try to create some actions out of the, those insights. Maybe I, I can try to change from theory to practice. And these are the things that I can do in order to improve my security. First one, low-hanging low fruit, the first one. Well, maybe I should cry, try to create a head hoc signature looking for UMSDXT in a payload of requests. Well, if I will do that, yes, of course, core rule set is supposed to detect all the attacks out there. But in practice, we know that there are some cases when we miss uh, some of the um, attacks. For instance, if I'm not doing the proper deployment, or if I'm not applying the right rule, or if, for instance, someone is trying to use a zero-day attack, 
then the core rule set will miss those attacks. And if I have this kind of ad hoc signature, well, maybe I can do better security. The second low hanging fruit here is, well, we saw those IP addresses. They are fixed IP addresses sending a lot of attacks. Why shouldn't I continue to try to get a, a request from those, well, malicious IPs? Maybe I should block, block list those IP addresses. And the third thing that I can do here, well, I know the behavior of the attackers. They are creating a lot of page not found responses from the web server. Well, maybe I should count those 404 coming from the web server. And if I see someone sending a lot of requests responded by 404, maybe I should tag those IP addresses that send this traffic and block them. And this is exactly, this example that we just saw, this is exactly what I'm going to talk to you today. I'm going to talk about the, the benefit of advanced WAF triggers analysis. What we can do in order to improve our security, in order to take the web application firewall and add another layer on top of this, another security controls that will help us do better security. So there are three things. The first method, we are going to talk about three methods. The first one, detection and mitigation, creating actionable intelligence. And it is quite similar to what we just saw. The second part is analysis. Well, we are trying to take all the data, all the WAF triggers data, and try to find out, well, if someone is trying to target a specific part of my application. Maybe someone knows a vulnerability that I have in my application and is trying to tackle that vulnerability. These kind of insights can only be achieved by doing post-processing of the data of the WAF triggers. And the third thing here is reporting. It's quite trivial, but I still wanted to mention that. If we take all those triggers and try to find out what really happens out there, what are the threats on our application, maybe I can create an enhanced executive report. Maybe I can take this report into my exact team and get a lot of benefit by doing that. So, we'll start by detection and mitigation. And in order to do that, we will talk about five techniques. Before the techniques, what's our objective here? Our objective is to find attacks, to improve mitigation, and we'll try to be one step ahead of the attackers. If we will find ways and techniques that will help us to be one step before they are coming to our application and be ready with the right mitigation and with the right security solution, that would be great. So as I said, we are going to talk about five techniques that can, can be used in order to do all those detection and mitigations. The first one is IP reputation or IP blocking, where think about it like that. There are a lot of malicious actors that are sending a lot of attacks to my application. Maybe I should try to, well, look at their traffic on their malicious traffic over time and try to, find, to, try to realize if they are doing over and over attacks on my application, maybe I should classify them and say they are malicious and there is a reason why they are malicious because I saw them sending attacks in the past week. And maybe I should also look on the attack types that they are using. If they are using DOS or scraping or remote file inclusion or SQL injection, maybe I should classify them by the attack type they, that they are using. Maybe I should also, well, take those malicious guys and do counter probing. Well, I should check all kind of thing about those malicious guys, try to figure out where they are coming from, their geographical location. Maybe I should check if they are coming from a proxy or not anonymous server. Maybe I should, well, try to figure out if they are web server, as we, sh we saw before. I can challenge those IPs and check if those IPs are web servers, then web servers are not supposed to send traffic to other web server. It's not supposed to happen. And the final point here is, once I will do all those things, I will have context aware or context sensitive mitigation. I will, will be able to put a different mitigation to all kinds of attackers. If someone is sending a lot of traffic to my application and is probably doing scraping or DOS attacks on my application, well, maybe I should 
start by doing a rate limiting on that malicious IP. And by that, lower the amount of traffic it generates. But if someone else is doing a SQL injection, over time, maybe I should just block him and not let him access my application. The second technique here is ad hoc signature, and we talked about it. Well, if we will take the payloads of that pack and try to analyze those payloads and try to find all kinds of things that we can do with those payloads, maybe we can create a dynamic or ad hoc signatures. And the first example is the human TXT that we saw before. But in this case, well, I'm actually showing you three different HTTP requests, different user agents, well, different exploits. It's not the same exploits that are being sent here, but there is one common thing about all those attacks, and that's the payload of the attack, the source of the, of the remote source of the, of the um, code that someone is trying to inject. And that's the common thing that we need to protect here. We should create signature based on that. The second example is file upload um, attack. And in this case, well, I took it from um, an exploit tool. They're trying to inject a page to a vulnerable, well, plugin. It's Joomla plugin, as far as I can remember. And by doing that, he's using, and I don't know if you see that, but that's the name of the file that he's trying to upload. Well, if that's the name of the file that he's trying to upload over and over again, over and over again on many different applications, maybe that's the signature I should use once he's doing that. And, while he, and once he will do that, well, I have no doubt that he is malicious and I should block him. Maybe this request will not be detected by mod security. There is no actual, well, there is no actual attack here. He's just trying to check if he can use an exploit, specific app exploit for a specific event, well, specific, well, vulnerability, trying to upload a page to application. So now we are coming to the third techniques. And here we are just, well, we are changing a, le a little bit the discussion here. And instead of finding a thing to improve our security from the WAP perspective, now we will talk about taking the payloads of that attack and trying to use those payloads as an outbound filtering. An outbound filter that each organization has that will help the organization prevent the users, the clients of the organization, going out to malicious websites. And in order to do that, we're going to talk about WebHive. I don't know if you are familiar with WebHive, but the basic concept with WebHive is that it's an application that someone puts on any given server. And once you get into that application from your browser, browse to that application, the only thing you need to do in order to start being an active denial of service attacker is two things. Put the target application, the application that you want to attack, and start and press the start button. Once you do that, your browser is becoming the attacking tool. Your browser stand, starts sending a flood of HTTP requests to the target application. And here is an example for such HTTP requests going to the target test.com. And this is the referral, where this request came from. This is the actual WebHive application that was accessed before the attack started. Now, if I can take this payload and find, in this case, this case, the malicious domain, it's a domain that hosts that malicious application. Now, I don't want my clients in my organization going out to such domains. Maybe I should add that to the list of domains that shouldn't be accessed from my um, organization. So we had three techniques, and now on the fourth technique. And in this technique, we are going to talk about bot net network mitigation. It is similar to the thing that we just saw in the uh, story at the beginning of the presentation, where we are trying to find similarities between attackers in order, well, to, to find a relation between the attacker, trying to understand what really happens on my application. And again, an example from the thing that, we, the, the thing that I saw in the story at the beginning of the presentation. I have, here, I have here three different HTTP requests, HTTP attacks actually, trying to exploit remote file inclusion vulnerabilities. Each of the vulnerabilities are different. 
Each of the headers, the user agent headers, are different. The IPs are different, right? But there is one common thing about them. And this common thing makes me or gives me the ability to create a relation between those IP addresses and understand that I'm being attacked by a bot and not by an individual attacker, which is important because when I want to protect and have good defenses to my organization, I need to understand when I'm being attacked by a single attacker or is it something orchestrated? It is something that, well, someone is investing a lot of resources in order to attack me. I need to be prepared for that. And for the final technique, well, in this case, what we want to do is we want to try to find if someone is abusing my application by doing an excessive access to my application. And here it's, again, example that we saw before. If someone is accessing many times to my application and getting many 404s or application errors, 500, or whatever response that we want to monitor, maybe we should try to figure out if it's a scanner, trying to find pages that does not exist on my application, trying to find exploit. If I use that technique, I may find things that while just looking at the traffic of the attacker, I won't find. And why is that? Because if someone is just doing scanning on my application, he's not sending a text. He's just trying to access pages that does not exist. But I will be able to find him and I will, have, will be able to pinpoint at him. And I will be able to be ready before he will start sending those attacks because I saw him doing reconnaissance on my application, which is good. So we talked about detection and mitigation. And now the third, the, sorry, the second technique is analysis. And in analysis, what we are trying to do is, well, we are trying to find those bad actors that are trying to target two types of things on my application. The first one is, well, they're trying to, to target all kinds of assets that I have in my application, whether it's my database, whether it's a search page, whether it's an open source plugin that I added to my application. Knowing what the attacker are trying to target is very important for me to be, in order for me to be ready in advance to the next step. And the second part is, well, if they have found vulnerabilities in my application and they are starting to target those vulnerabilities, vulnerabilities that I'm not aware of, well, I want to know that. And by doing analysis on the data that we already have, we will be able to do that. And again, example for that. The first case here is, well, I want to know, and, and the example talk about SQL injection. I want to know if the attackers know all kind of thing about my schema, my database schema. For instance, if he knows the names of the fields or the name of the, of the table, well, he's smart. Why he's smart? Maybe I have an information leakage. Maybe this information was leaked and now he's trying to target those tables and fields in my application. Maybe he knows what kind of application I'm using, if it's an open source application, and he knows the names of the fields in the database of those applications. If this is what he is doing, and he knows what I'm doing, uh, what he is doing, I want to be prepared for that. And the second example is, well, if I will look at the response of the web application and try to find out if there are SQL exceptions, like an information leakage that gives all kind of indication, well, I will, be, I will know if I have vulnerability or not. If I can see someone sending a SQL injection payload, and at the same time, my application return a SQL exception, well, that means that most likely I have a vulnerability in my application, and someone is targeting that vulnerability. It's not just a SQL injection event that happens on my application. This is something more severe. There is vulnerability and someone is abusing that. So we talked about detection, mitigation, analysis, and the final part is reporting. And here, what we will try to do is we try to create enhanced executive report 
that can help us in numerous ways. The first one, well, it will help us present attack-oriented um, reports, meaning it's not just saying, well, theoretically or, well, the common practice or um, this is the trends in the market, I'm saying what really happened on my application on, let's say, the, the last three months. What kind of attacks were on my application? That's very valuable. The second part is, well, I will be able to say or will, will be able to demonstrate my WAF ROI. If I can say, well, I invested a lot of money in deploying and purchasing web application firewall. And this is my ROI. These are the results of doing all this effort. Well, I can do that by, all, all, again, by analyzing the data that was created by the WAF. The second bullet here is, well, I can also show my ROI. I can also show that I am professional, that I know what I'm doing, that I'm a security, security expert, and, well, it can be also thought about as job security. I'm no, I know what I'm doing. I know what kind of analysis I need to do. I know my, my mitigation. I know what really happens out there. And the final bullet here is, and that's a trivial one. Well, what we are trying to do here is we're trying to make security accessible to those that are not understand security. Well, to those that are not experts. So, in order to finalize all the things that I just spoke about, I decided to do a case study. And in that case study, I took one, well, one application that I monitor, and I was looking at 48 hours of all the WAF triggers that were created on, those, on this time frame of 48 hours, and these are the results. When looking at SQL injection attack, I was able to find 108 IP addresses that sends attacks. Doing a counter probing on those IP addresses, I was able to see that 40% of those IP addresses were actually proxies. So here you can see the map of where those IP addresses came from in the world. By the way, most of them came from the United States, just because the proxies, because someone is using proxies in order to send attacks and using a proxy coming from different geolocation, but going through United States proxies can um, mask their, your origin. And, of course, that important thing, if I know that 40% of the attackers are coming from proxy, maybe I should react to that. Maybe I should block those proxy. Maybe I should do some more in-depth analysis on the traffic that comes from those proxies. It's an important thing. The second thing on SQL injection is I try to understand what are the tools that the attacker are using, and I was able to see that they're using SQL map and a it, it wasn't so hard to do that. I was looking at the user agent, and that's what appeared there. And also, when looking at, well, the actual payloads that they sent, so I can see in one case they are targeting WordPress users table. Someone is trying to steal, well, to penetrate into the, um, WordPress user stable and extract values out of that. In my case, my, my client, the client that, analyzed, that I analyzed his data didn't have WordPress, so it was useless. But that is the kind of thing you can see that happens out there. And the second part here is, well, it's a trivial one, but someone is do doing an uppercase, lowercase kind of um, payload injection. And that's, well, when someone using that, well, that means that he's a little bit more sophisticated that the common user is trying to do evasion, try to see if the security filters has such capability to detect um, mixed uppercase, lowercase payloads. So that was what I have seen about SQL injection. But something is not working for me. OK. The second step was WebHive. As I showed you before, the application that once you logged into that application, you don't need to log, you just need to browse to that application. Put, I put a different application, different snapshot of application, putting the target that you want to hit, pressing the start button. And by doing the analysis on 48 hours, I was able to find 23 different WebHive applications. 
This is the list of the, those applications. It is essentially very small. I, 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 don't, I don't try to share this information just because I don't want someone to abuse it, but the basic concept is that there are out there many web applications that are being used. Looking on distributed activities, 48 hours, I would try to find if there are all kinds of activities that are distributed. What I was able to see that there are 20, I was able to see 22 IP addresses originating from Indonesia, coming from the same telecom operator, sending SQL injection over a time frame of 36 hours. It was ongoing attack, right? Someone was probably reusing the resources of that network because it was blocked over and over again and, alloc and got allocated different IPs, but I was able to see something that one once looking at a single WAF trigger, a single event that just happened, I don't see that picture unless I'm doing analysis on that data. Now, I talked about the findings. Now let's talk about, well, the actionable intelligence, the thing that we just talked about. Well, first of all, I should do an IP blocking or subnet blocking in the case of the, in the case of someone coming from the same subnet. Maybe I should, for instance, do geolocation blocking. If I can see, for instance, that in the last two hours, someone is hitting my application from a specific country that I usually don't see traffic coming from that uh, country, maybe I should, for, for the time being, block that country. Um, maybe I should block proxies, as we saw before. Well, maybe I should add all kind of ad hoc signature. We can add hoc, ad hoc signature looking at refer for domains that are not supposed to be there. In the case of WebHive, we can take all the, the information of the WebHive and put it into outbound filtering, putting their signature that my customer won't go, my, well, my clients in my organization won't, won't go, get out of my organization to those domains. And when I'm talking about tar detecting targeted attacks, well, I should check and look at the SQL payload. I saw all kind of funny stuff that I analyzed those things, trying to figure out if my customer has WordPress or not. Well, maybe I should look at the source of the IP addresses, try to figure out where they are coming from. Maybe it's like a campaign that been coming from proxies or from specific gay location to my application. And, well, if it's an orchestrated attack, if it's something that generated by many IP addresses, I need to, f to know that. I need to know if someone is doing denial of service on my organization. Is it one client that sent denial of service or, or my, to my organization, or is it numerous IPs coming from different locations, sending a lot of traffic to, org to my organization, and there is something common about them? Well, I want to know about it. I want to start doing better security if I know that. So my final slide is for, for today. Well, and this is well trying to talk about analysis and the reporting. And I gave you, I gave you all kind of example of things that I was doing in the past and all kind of reports that I created in order to show customer, well, if it's a chai park or if it's um, something that's related to, to geographical maps or whether it's graph the show growth over time, these kind of things makes our work more visible to our executives and gives us a lot of benefits in the way that we present the thing that we are do doing and help us, well, in order to get more resources from our executive. And that's important. So it was, I think, a little bit short, but um, if you have any questions, Okay, so actually doing that, it's, well, I'm not, I wasn't using any specific tool. I was using tools that are being used as part of my organization. My organization take the logs and digest the HTTP traffic of the, what really happened and all the meta information that I have on those WAF triggers and put it in a database. And the only thing I was doing was querying the database. The only trick is to know which question you want to ask. That, that's, that's a trick. There's no, a lot of technology behind it. Should be, 
But at the moment, and the way that I was doing that, it was just asking the right questions. Someone else? Yes. They are fake, but the, that, that's exactly what really happens out there. The, the attacker knows that if you will correlate only the user agent, it will be an easy task for you. So what he's trying to know, and there are security filters today that correlate user agent and tell you, well, I'm seeing all kinds of similarities in user agent. That's why he has a list of user agents, and he random those user agents in his HTTP request, and this is the result. He's just trying to be smart. He's trying, the next step, well, maybe he will change the, the, the actual payload, but that's more difficult from his perspective, and this is also something that you can try to find out if he's randomly creating all kind of payloads. Yeah. So this is, it, it's, it's not a product. I'm not showing a product. I'm, I can say that I can tell about my experience and the things I was doing. I was doing that, and I, and I think in some of the things that I want to say in 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 my summary, um, there's no doubt it should be a project. Maybe it should be an OWASP project that I would love to contribute to that project. I cannot lead this this kind of project. I don't have the capacity to do that. But it, it can be a project that takes WAF triggers, put them into database have the right queries and write the analysis on that and get outputs. Get outputs that say, well, this is the action that you need to do. Maybe those outputs need to be action to mod security telling, well, these are the dynamic signatures that need to be created and these are the reason for that. Maybe the tool should, should create all kinds of CSVs and reports that will be used. It, it's a great idea. Yeah. So the question in relation to the address. Okay. So we, earlier today we had, I don't know if you were in the Jacob West, he was from, he's a CTO at HP, he was doing a, a lecture and he actually talked about this issue, about creating a platform that, well, a community platform that everyone shares what really happens in their applications and application or network or whatever. And on that plat platform you get the right insight and the right understanding because if someone is attacking you, maybe he's attacking someone else, and if both of you will share this information, well. I mean, there are always uh, some uh, people who yeah, are connected yeah. like uh, somewhere in the internet. Yeah, it's a, it's a huge project. Also, people contribute to the server or anybody else. They're not perfect yet. Yeah. So, uh, I'm not sure if you're. Jacob works in a very large vendor and he's doing that as being, well, I'm sure he's doing that as part of being contributing to the community, but at the same time, it's probably would be an HP, well, profitable project. It's not doing, it's, it's not a small project. It can be done. I know that there are all kind of initiatives. I don't know what the status of those initiatives, but if someone can, you know, pick the ball and, and do something about it, I would love to help. Someone else? So let me just summarize what, we, well, what I showed you today. And I, would sh I showed you how you can take web application firewall, do analysis on the traffic that, well, on the triggers that created by the web application firewall, and do detection mitigation, do analysis, and do reporting, and improve at the end of the day the security that we offer. And I think that's our ultimate goal. Uh, thank you for today. Oh, uh, if you have...